but 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 you know it everybody caught the notice of everybody yeah. especially the babylonians who studied that was one of their things was to study the heavens you know yes. and, and uh, astronomy and and so what happened is when that took place they began asking around and the word was already out it's a king over in israel who has requested this of his god and so he you know races over they, they send uh, ambassadors to israel to come to hezekiah and ask him uh, what's this thing we're hearing about this sundial? Well, guess what? We have to take a break, and I'm sure everyone's going to be coming back. So be right back. Don't go away, and we'll let you hear the rest of the story. Food, one of the most essential elements for life, providing nourishment, energy, and even enjoyment. But what if there was no food? Water, the most important element to life on Earth. Covering 70% of the world, water sustains the plants we eat and hydrates our bodies. But what if there was no water? Bibles, the Holy Word of God. God's written gift is His prime method of communicating the gift of grace to his children. Sadly, there remains two-thirds of the planet, over four billion people, who have never even held that message in their hands. Since 2007, Remnant Publications has been reaching the people of Africa with the Word of God. These are precious souls who have never had the opportunity to read the life-changing message of the gospel for themselves. Hundreds of thousands of Bibles have already been donated and printed, loaded into containers, and shipped to the continent of Africa, making it into the hands of spiritually starving Christians eager to know more about the love of God. As the word has spread about the Bibles for Africa project, requests started coming in from all over the world, even unreached countries like Cuba. God seemed to be opening doors bigger than the staff at Remnant had envisioned. Following God's lead, Remnant has expanded the reach of the Bibles to cover the entire globe, making this a true worldwide project. Imagine, we can take your good unused Bibles and put them in the hands of an individual that really needs it. Or, for just only $3, we can take a brand new Bible like this and get it sent to anyone that's hungering and thirsting for the Word of God. And not just in Africa, but anywhere in the world that it's needed. But as you've seen, the need is so overwhelming. We urgently need your help to reach the world with Bibles. Will you commit today to helping us in this exciting effort to share the gospel with the world? Will you help us introduce Jesus to these precious souls? To get involved and learn more about the Your Bible Saves Project, Call us now at 1-800-423-1319 or visit us on our website at www.yourbiblesaves.com. And we're back to hear the rest of the story. Um, about Hezekiah, what a story. And we ended it off before this break where here Hezekiah got his prayer answered um, because, because he wanted it the way he wanted it. And, uh, but what, because of that, because it, was, it wasn't God's will, he gave him permission, that's what we're saying. What happened? Well, well, what took place uh, here that you were talking about? As we about? were saying, the sundial had turned uh, backward. backward. The wow. Babylonians had noticed it and they actually sent ambassadors to Hezekiah, they'd heard that it was this king in, in Judah that had um, requested this of his God. So they actually made the journey over there, asked Hezekiah about it uh, when they came over. And when Hezekiah had these ambassadors come, I mean, what, what would you do after a healing like that? You'd well, think you would say what? Well, think, hey, I want to give glory to the God of heaven that healed me. I don't, you know, but, you know, I was just thinking as you saying that, you know what, isn't it strange? that when we're in the lowest ebb of life, 
we depend more upon God. We, we, I don't know why, but we do, because I guess everything's taken away. So Hezekiah is sick in bed, ready to die. That's probably when he was the closest with God. Now he gets healed by this huge miracle, and the sundial goes backwards. And instead of giving glory to God, what's he do? He, he sits out there and shows off, so to speak. Well, yeah. you move on with your life. Because, yeah. you know, you've got your answer, kind That's of. Right. And it's like, well, let's just go back to normal things yeah. now. I know I had a problem, and God, I prayed to him. I was right there, because, you know, time's of trouble. Oh, yeah. God, help me. And I'm so important, because the sundial exactly. went back. Exactly. So, But now, you know... Hey, I'm feeling good. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that, that I realize a lot of times when I talked about when you breathe and that sort of thing, the way I do, um, you know, it's like a reminder every day that, that anything that uh, I have can be taken away at, at a moment's instantly. instance, almost, which is what happened with Hezekiah as oh, the story continued. And it would be great had he kept that mindset, but what happened is when these Babylonian uh, uh, ambassadors came, Instead of giving glory to God, the Bible says he went and he showed him everything that he had of worth mm. in the empire, not realizing that, I mean, hey, look at this, guys. Look what I have here. Look at this valuable look piece of artifact. Look at yeah. It. Yeah. He and, took him to his treasure house. And, and what happened is, after they left, God sent a message to, he, uh, to Isaiah the prophet, and he said, you go tell Hezekiah. And we're going to actually pick it up in Isaiah 39. And uh, it says there in verse 6, this is the words of, of Isaiah to uh, Hezekiah, Behold, the days are coming. When all that is in your house and all that your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon, nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will beget, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Mm. So, in, a, in other words, everything that they saw, they planned later to come back and get. And that, and whole, that whole Babylonian captivity that, that, that took place with the, with the nation later resulted... In, in, in a prayer. In a prayer that, that Hezekiah prayed, and, and it was that 15 additional years, it was in that period of time that, that, that this whole situation took place. In other words, had Hezekiah put his house in order the way that God said it would be, had his prayer not been answered the way he wanted it answered, uh, it would have avoided that disaster. And, and, so, he, and he had a son. He had a son, Manasseh, Manasseh who ended was... up being the most wicked. In fact, Manasseh had Isaiah the prophet killed, among other things. The Bible says he, was, he, he caused the children of Israel to do more wickedly than the heathen did. Wow. And that also took place after his prayer was granted. So when somebody is praying, let's bring it uh, okay. to today's world. You know, I'm praying for that new job. I'm, I'm praying that I can make enough money to get that car. I'm praying for whatever the case may be. Really, we should be praying uh, in, in God's will. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, just for me, please answer my prayer so I Absolutely. can have things that are better. And, and that's really what a lot of people do. Well, what about, what about Christ? I mean, I, w when I pray and I want something, I think of, of Jesus out there um, on, the, in, on the Mount of Olives, Gethsemane, and he's saying, Lord, if, if there's any way possible, take this cup from me. But he added, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. The, the deal is, he was praying for something, but he did not, he, he knew that he wasn't sharp enough at that time because there was pain. You know, there's, there's, this, there's this emotion. Hezekiah was dying. Obviously, he wanted to live. But he said, Lord, look at all these. He was looking at himself. And I, and I think of a text I'd like to turn to real quick here. It's in, it's in Psalms 139. This is something that, it, it's a scripture song, and I hum it a lot when I want something done and this is what I go it's, it's Psalms 139 23 and 24 and here's what it says search me O God and know my heart try me and know my anxieties or your will and see if there's any wicked way in me in other words I might be praying this but Lord you need to reveal to me because the heart is deceitful above all things desperately wicked who can know it I don't even know my own heart but God can reveal it to me and so what it says here, and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. If Hezekiah would have prayed this prayer, 